Hey there, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. My name is Jana, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my 10 most visually stunning board games. One game that I wanted to include, this is an honorable mention. This is a game that I purchased from an Etsy store. Uh, it's The Etsy store is Montrose Biology, and it's a game about uh, ecologies, as you can see. And it's a card game, a tableau card game. The artwork in this game, is so cool. Beautiful, vintage, scientific artwork. I would love to actually find out where it was sourced from, if it's from old newspapers or journals or what, but I mean, the, I just, I love the artwork. Unfortunately, I didn't want to include this on my list because uh, I, I don't really want to play it with anyone I really like because I would feel so mean and feel so bad playing some of the, the things here. If you like cutthroat games though, this might be something to check out. Personally, it wasn't for us, but gorgeous game, stunning artwork. Just wanted to add it as an honorable mention. Wardrobe change. <laughs> I was cold. <laughs> so these games are in my collection. They're games that we like and games that we play and games that I feel are visually stunning. The things that just strike you visually and make you come over to the table and say, hey, what are you, what do you got there? It looks stunning. Stunning. These games are all visually striking, stunning, and beautiful for their own unique reasons. So let's just get started with photosynthesis. This was my number one favorite game of all time in my top 10 from a few years ago. I still love this game. It is a, it is a very puzzly abstract strategy game in which you are, you're putting trees out onto a game board but you have to upgrade your trees and you pay for your tree upgrades uh, with light points. So the more trees you have, the more light points you have, so the more you can grow your forest. The trick is that sometimes someone else's tree will cast a shadow on yours based on where the sun is positioned on the board. And then that prevents you from getting light that turn. So it's very tactical very puzzly and strategic. People complain that it's too samesy. My husband and I have played this quite a lot and we've tried many different strategies and I actually think it's really cool to see who's gonna do well. I've done well um, trying different things and I've won multiple ways and I've played with lots of different people. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful game as you can see. <sighs> I just love looking at it like it has, I don't know, there's something about trees that really get to me. I'm a sucker for the trees. And this one just screams fall. Fall! And it's also very easy to find in big box stores this time of year. So it is available. I think I saw it. At, it's available at Walmart and Target in those big box stores. All right, next we have On Her Majesty's Service. This is not easy to find. This was a Kickstarter from several years ago, it hasn't been reprinted. You may be able to find this from a used uh, game store. This game is stunning visually. I mean, look at this box. It has the foil printing, the metallic foil on it. Um, the artistry in it is beautiful. It's steampunk styling is just peppered throughout. Uh, the miniatures in this game are creepy and dark. The artistry is very dark. There's like skull people. So it, it definitely has its dark side, but visually stunning. Um, I love the, the coppers and the browns, the warm tones, and then these poppy um, components are put out on the board and there's these uh, cogs that you have to spin. So it's definitely a game of like um, making the right move at the right time and manipulating the board. There's different ways to manipulate the board. It's very tactile and I, I mean, it's just cool. It's just really cool looking. And I mean, just beautifully designed, beautiful artwork. It's really fun to play too. Very puzzly, very like mind bending and just, Really unique art. Like, look at that box. I love the box guy. That was the world of smog on Her Majesty's service. Stunning. 
Sleeping Gods. This is published by Red Raven. It is an adventure style game and it is the world of Ryan Lockett in its, all its glory. Um, I think the most striking part of this is the use of the aqua color. These greens and blues are just stunning. I'm going to be using this word stunning quite a lot. Uh, this game is filled with secrets and plot twists and new characters. There's lots and lots and lots of story. I love the storage component in this game, the way that they use these boxes that look like cargo to store all the adventures that you're going to do. And then the artwork for these are just very painterly um, and kind of mystical looking. A lot of really beautiful cards with unique art on each card. Each one's kind of special and unique. And it's just really beautiful and fantastical, as you can see. And this um, is available. If you go online, you can find it. It is expensive, though, and there aren't quite as many copies, I don't think, floating around. Uh, this was a Kickstarter, but there is a, like, we got the retail version. I'm just not sure if it's something that all game stores would have. So you might have to look for it a little bit. The next game on my list is Singrata. And this is a dice rolling game where you're trying to complete a puzzle, which is actually a stained glass window. <laughs> this is a game themed around the, Singra the Singrata Cathedral. So these are what the components look like and you're drafting dice um, each round and you're trying to fill out your window pane. So the rules are you can't have repeating colors next to each other, you can't have repeating pip numbers next to each other, but you have to fill in the requirements for each puzzle. And you have these puzzle cards that you can swap out of your window panes. Ultimately, you're just trying to fill in this window pane with these beautiful translucent dice. And in the end, you really have this stunning pattern that is glistening and very reminiscent of actual stained glass windows. And it's just such a puzzly game, but it's also striking and it's so beautiful the components that are the the prettiest part of the game are what you get to handle and um and to play with so it's very satisfying in addition to being very beautiful <sighs> <Love Sagrada>. okay <clears throat> the next one on my list is a game called mysterium and this is a game where you're interpreting dreamlike visions on these uh on these cards and you're trying to get people to guess clues about a murder. It's a cooperative game and one person is the ghost and everyone is at the seance trying to get messages from the ghost to figure out who killed them and with what weapon and what room and, and um, you know, just like in Clue, but, but in a much more artistic way. And the ghost, they know what the weapon is and the, the murder and all that. So they're trying to reveal the truth to the people at the seance, but only through these dream-like cards, which are beautiful, painterly, strange, and dreamlike. There's so many of them. Like, you could just go through this. You could play this game so many times and still miss so much detail. And I also love how dramatic the setup of this game is. And you have this big shield that the ghost is behind. There's a smaller streamlined version of Mysterium. Hmm, excuse you. But personally, I like the big one that it feels more like an event. Um, so that's just me personally. But I never get tired of looking at the artwork in Mysterium. The next game on my list is Genotype. I love Genotype. It's a worker placement game with a really unique theme. It's, it's all based around Gregor Mendel, who originally discovered genetics. It reminds me of an art journal. It has these really pretty sketches on them. And you're planting little pea pods. It has a lot of gardening aesthetics in it. Beautifully designed, like the the graphics and the graphic design of it 
is superb. It has beautiful light where there's a lot of shadows and lights like you would see outside in nature. And then there's these beautiful cards with portraits on them. They have a little peepaw plants. The whole thing feels very warm and comforting and alive. It's just screams like spring. Spring! And it's a really fun little worker placement on top of it. The next game on my list is Rallyman GT. This is a car racing game. Oh, it's so heavy. There's so much cardboard in this game. This game, it's not what typically, what people would typically put on their most beautiful board game list. But because it's race cars, it seems very like masculine and like no nonsense, we're racing cars. But when you stop and you really look at the artistry that went into the illustrations, it's pretty outstanding. And a rule book. There's some portraits of some racers. It's just a lot. Like, look at that. I mean, they didn't have to put all that beautiful artwork, but they did. They have these really neat pictures of the cars. It looks like it's watercolor. But the paint, it, they're paintings. It feels like paintings. It feels like fine art. It doesn't feel commercial or cheesy or anything. I don't know. It just kind of was a surprise to me. And Rally G, Rallyman GT is a really fun racing game. My husband loves it. I wouldn't say that I love it, but I like it a lot. I have a lot of fun with it. And I think that for it being a racing game, they really did a lot with it and I feel like they went the extra mile in the art realm. Like, look at this box. I just love it. I like the paint splatters, the reflection in the guy's helmet. Hey, future Johnny here. I just wanted to speak to the fact that some of these board games have spot UV on them. Photosynthesis, Rallyman GT, Sangrata, and Sleeping Gods all have spot UV on their covers. Did you even notice? It's very hard to see on camera. And in person it looks cool, but when you think about the fact that the spot UV is achieved by adding plastic to the printing process, which will break down over decades into microplastics, I really find it less and less appealing to have it on my board games. Maybe we should start asking for less spot UV upgrades and more like really beautiful finishes like like the, the gold foil treatment that we saw on In Her Majesty's Service, which looked stunning on camera and is just as beautiful in person. It doesn't have a long-term effect on the environment when it decomposes. If you'd like to learn more about the environmental impacts of the board gaming industry, I've really been looking into it over the last couple months and I have quite a few videos on the subject, so feel free to check those out. The game I'd like to talk about is Abyss. I love Abyss. It is such a good game. But the art is really stunning. I know I say it over and over, but it is a video about stunning artwork, so, you know. I mean, striking, right? that monster. I like it. I love the colors, the like the bioluminescent colors, the ultraviolet colors. Um, here are some of the pictures of the different characters. They're just fantastical and oh, it just makes me happy to play. Maybe it's not gonna, you know, get me the best strategy, but like I I like that guy. I want to collect him. Beautiful. Just really well done. I always love the, this. The pearl. I mean, what other game do you have pearls? Pearl components in. It is just full of beauty and fantasy of the deep sea, which I think is actually pretty unique as far as a board game theme. So that is why Abyss had to be included another part. Excuse you. So the next game on my list is, no surprise, Wingspan deserves its place on my most visually stunning board game list. I mean, it's just beautiful. The cards are beautiful. It's airy, it's light, but the most impressive part is probably the birds. Like the, I mean, 
it's so educational. It's easy to follow along. The iconography is very clear, easy to read. I mean, it's just lovely. I love the player boards, how they look like a leather satchel that you open up or like a leather journal that you look at. Of course, I mean, the bird feeder, everyone loves the bird feeder. I love the little wooden dice. Um, it's just very, very pretty, aesthetically pleasing board game. Okay, and we're getting to the end. I still have a few more. Next one is maybe a little bit of a surprise to be on this list, but Project Dell. I think Project Dell is visually stunning. Not in the beautiful, artistic sense of beautifully stunning that some of these other games are, but in a very slick, smart design, it comes across very striking. Um, I think what I really like about it is that there's not a lot of color in the game. It's mostly, you know, black and white puzzle pieces. That's pretty much it. But then the puzzle pieces themselves are like little pieces of brightly colored rainbow candies. So again, it's kind of like that same thing that you have in Sangrado and in um, Photosynthesis where the components of the game are the beauties, are the pretty things. And it's so satisfying that that's what you actually are handling and managing and touching. So that's why Project Dell is on this. I, I just think it really stands out as far as a elegant, slick design. Um, I, I just don't think there's a lot of games that are quite as successful as Project Dell is with their graphic design and their overall aesthetic. Project Dell. Finally on my list, Canopy. This is a really little um, tableau style card game and it's all about a thriving ecosystem in a rainforest. And this is new to me, so I haven't even reviewed it yet. I have played it a couple times. I think this may be one of the best box covers I've seen since maybe Photosynthesis. Like, it is just striking. It's small, but it is eye-catching. Of course, this is a card game, so we have lots of brightly printed cards. Uh, you have all sorts of flowers, vegetation, wild animals. You just end up with like a rainforest kind of peppering your entire game table, which is delightful and beautiful and stunning. Okay, I think, I think that's all of them. So those are my top 10. I think I did 11. It's actually my top 11, but top 10s always sound better for YouTube algorithms. So the beauty of our board games should not go underappreciated. And it's such a joy to be able to share these beauties with our friends and family. So I hope that you enjoyed this list and let me know in the comments, what are your favorite visually stunning board games in your collection? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, let me, don't forget to.